Hey everybody, welcome to the webinar. My name is Michaela and I am the content marketing manager here at Get the Referral. And we are super excited to have you with us today. So today we are going to talk all about how to take your data and use it for analyzation, analyzing and optimization and making sure you can fuel your business growth. We have a special guest with us today. But before we do that, let me properly introduce myself. I am Michaela Martinson. I am the content marketing manager here at Get the Referral, and I'm super excited to be your host today. We do have this super exciting webinar, and we have some exciting things at the very end. So I do want to make sure you guys all stay on until the end because we have not only a super special offer, but we also have some prizes. So there is a free giveaway today for our GTR swag. We've got some free stuff we would love to give you. So please type on time in the chat box. If you are here right now, you are on time. So welcome again and type on time in the chat box and please, you may get some cool stuff. And I know you want to have a shirt just like mine. So, all right. A little housekeeping really quick before we dive in. I do wanna let you know that we are recording today's webinar. We will be sharing the replay link after the event. Um, so definitely share that with your friends and colleagues. Um, we do wanna keep in mind though that the offer that we're making at the end of the webinar is limited. It's a limited time offer, so it might not be available for too long after the replay. So keep that in mind, stay till the end, and we will uh, make sure that you get everything you need. So, one more thing, questions. I'm sure you guys will have some. Please feel free to type them in the chat box, whatever comes to mind, and we will answer questions for about five or 10 minutes at the end of the webinar and see if we can get all of your questions answered during that time. Now, without further ado, I have our wonderful, amazing Chief Revenue Officer, Vic Rotelli here with us today, and we are super excited, Vic, I will turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Michaela. I'm sure you can hear me. Just a quick thumbs up to make sure that the audio, cool. So uh, welcome, everybody. Excited to spend a little bit of time with you guys today. And hopefully you'll come away with a couple of nuggets that you can use uh, right away, and it will impact you in a positive way. Uh, if you guys saw the Rams game, I think it was like a few weeks ago, the streaker jumped on and definitely got the team's attention ended up getting tackled. So please um, don't let Michaela tackle you. If you could put your phone on stun, on vibrate, and just give us 20 minutes of undivided attention, I think that would be great uh, because she does have a vicious hit. So you wanna make sure you stay on her good side. So uh, with that being said, let's get rolling. Let's get into this thing. So who am I? Yeah, I'm that guy, right? I'm that guy on the photo. And I'm the chief revenue officer at Get The Referral. Before this, I actually had the pleasure of working at a few other companies and really helped them scale uh, from a marketing and sales uh, perspective, mostly either marketing tech companies or SaaS companies. And I'll give you guys an idea of some of the things that I've been part of and you know some of the learnings that I had along the way that I still carry with me today. Uh, some companies, we, we took them from 5 million, 35 million in revenue um, and really used data to help us scale that business. So some of the learnings that we did along the way here at GTR, uh, we've actually grown quite a bit since I joined a couple of years ago to the tune of about 300%. And again, we are like data geeks. We get into the data and we really uh, take a lot of learnings from that. So. I've been doing this for a little bit over, I'm going to age myself, 25 years from various companies, uh, both like huge companies and small companies. And some of the things that I learned kind of like carry over. So why are data and analytics important? And we're going to get into the heart of that right now. Uh, if you are like me, and I'm a big football fan, I'm not gonna say who my football team is, but I can tell you they're four and one and they're in the NFC East. 
Um, but if you watch the football games on the weekend, you'll see like all these like probabilities. There's a, a wide receiver in the end zone and he's catching the pass and Amazon will flash this thing about there's a 22% probability that he was going to make that play, right? Uh, or something else will happen and they'll give you like a probability score. They'll make it kind of fun and they'll make it kind of like interacting. Uh, should the uh, should the coach go for two points like in the Kansas City uh, Raider game and then they didn't make it? Uh, so there's like analytics everywhere around you from sports to like big business. And no matter the size of your business, what analytics is, what analytics is going to help you to do is um, help you make better decisions. So um, today I am going to share with you, I don't know if they're called three secrets, but three maybe like guiding principles and trying to keep it simple of some of the fundamental things that we're really gonna talk about when it comes to analytics and things that you can measure and you can make adjustments and really analyze you know, what's going on with your business and figure out if you're heading in the right direction or not. So secret number one, the data will set you free, right? So therefore, what you're gonna find from your current business is it's going to give you a baseline, a foundation of analyzing, uh, hopefully mostly what you're doing right and some of the things that you could improve on and help you unlock some opportunities for growth in the future. You don't have to look all around and, and really figure out you know, your competition, what are they doing, although there's a lot of best practices that you can pick up along the way or even wait for like the next biggest thing a lot of the things that you're going to be able to do are right there at your fingertips and they're definitely going to tell a story so no need to go chasing the next big thing secret number one which we'll dive into a lot more detail in a couple minutes so in order for you to get there there's key performance indicators um, which are super important as a business and for example we have key performance indicators that get the referral um, and I'm known as like the data person here. I, I oversee marketing sales and customer success, but one of the things I really do is I do a deep dive on data, which really helps me to make decisions. And for the most part, they're kind of rational decisions because they're backed by data. Now, not all data is created equal and not all data is gonna tell the truth. Some of the times you really have to dig into your data and really figure out uh, what is the story that is going on and what is the trend? So I'll go over some of the key performance indicators that we look at, and I think that these translate to you as well. No matter what kind of business you are, the number one thing that's going to fuel your business to grow and drive is the number of leads. So we use a CRM tool, and I'm sure some of you guys use a CRM tool as well. And we track every single aspect of what happens from the time the lead comes in to the time that it closes right so we'll take a look at some of these things so a lead obviously is a, a prospect whether qualified and unqualified a potential customer you may have not talked to them yet and it's coming to your business and there's a level of interest right the second thing that we track is opportunity right from that point that the lead comes in it either becomes a qualified or unqualified lead. And when it becomes a qualified lead, it turns into an opportunity. And at that point, we will, um, you know, the clock basically starts ticking. And I'll go into a little bit more detail what I mean by that. Um, the other thing that you really want to track, and obviously we get the referral kind of live in this realm, is referrals. So that's a key indicator of your business and we're going to ask you some questions a little bit later so i'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag quite yet but you know how is your referral business doing um are you getting an adequate number of people that are referring your business by others right then the ultimate goal is to get to new customers so and that for us is actually the number of new sold deals and i'm going to go into a little bit more detail as soon as we uh, wrap this up and then the next thing is uh, budget and investment so um, these are the key performance indicators we're tracking here. Same thing with you. I'm, I'm sure we talk to solar companies. We talk, we talk to roofing companies, thousands during a course of a year. 
uh, and everyone has a budget and you're splitting that budget in like similar ways. And we're going to ask you a little bit later, how are you utilizing your budget? Whether it's door knocking, buying leads, doing ads on Google, Facebook, or, you know, if you're funding a referral program or what have you, the important thing is stick to the budget and really dig down and see what that investment is giving you, which is the next point, which is revenue earned. So when all this is said and done, you start it out with a lead and hopefully if you're really good at it, you get all the way to like a new customer. And then from there, you can analyze uh, if I did X, Y, Z, it got me a new lead to turn into a customer and we'll go into some of the metrics to track and then you'll determine what your ROI is. And then over time, the goal is to continuously adjust and make sure that you're spending your budget where you're getting the best return on investment and you're not like this lady here that's just firing money out and kind of like letting it fall where it may. All right, thanks for joining us. <laughs> that's it. No, that's not it. So um, yeah, so while, while we go into that and uh, we go back to like the, uh, the data analytics and we take a look at some of the key performance indicators, um, one of the things that I did want to share with you is you can take this stuff and um, dedicate yourself. And by the way, th this PowerPoint presentation is going to be given to you. So you can pick and choose which key performance indicators you would analyze and create some simple equation uh, to see whether or not you're getting a good ROI or to see whether or not you should continue to do some of the things that, you, that, that you're doing. And again, as it says on the bottom, this is not really hard to do. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell, but we really want to get to the end of this presentation today. So, no, it's just wherever I'm clicking, it keeps going off the presentation. So I apologize. For sure. And then, yeah, then, then we're also going to get into how do you make some of this data work for you. I'll give you a quick uh, idea of what we do. And we're kind of fanatical when it comes to the data. Like when we get a lead that comes in and then one of our sales team actually gets to talk to that lead the first thing we'll identify is like is this a good match for what we do and then from there uh our sales people will turn that into an opportunity which is like a you know a potential customer and the clock starts ticking we will also that allows us to gauge uh something that's called sales velocity right so that's how we can make that data work for us therefore if i have five sales reps and I get an opportunity for a sales rep to talk to a customer that we want to talk to. How long does it take that sales rep to close it? Right. That's that's one of the metrics that we really look at. And we make that we make that work for us by tracking that KPI. The other thing that we do is we also take a look at the close one ratio by sales rep. Therefore, again, if you have five sales reps on your team, is there something happening within your team? Like, does one rep have a much higher sales close one ratio than another rep? You know, and what do you do with that, right? So therefore, the next time the lead comes in, what do you do? Do you give it to the person that has a, a higher close one ratio, or do you just spread it out evenly among the team um, over time? So, you know, those are all questions that pop up once you have the data in hand. Um, and that's one of the biggest things. The starting point is a conversion. Right. If you think about the conversion rate, and again, this is again what you can use leaving today if you're not already doing this, right? And this not only measures the effectiveness of your sales team uh, and converting leads into new customers, but it also measures the effectiveness of your marketing channel into converting leads into your customers. Therefore, if you had 25 leads that came in, you know, what's the conversion rate on those uh, 25 leads? Did you close five of them? Did you take them through the sales funnel? And in about a second, we're gonna show you a, uh, a quick survey uh, and get some feedback from you. And this goes back to, and again, it provokes some thought around this, is what is standard for you as a conversion rate and what should you expect? And are you within the boundaries of where you should be or not? So if you can take a, um, a moment here and fill out this quick poll and we'll kind of get an idea of what your current conversion rate is. And you can say, I don't know. And if you do know, uh, this is great. You know, you're on the right path. If you don't know, you're going to be able to take this formula and apply it moving forward and um, uh, get your conversion rate. Because if you don't know your conversion rate, then you don't know how you should stack or if you're making any improvement or if you should do any additional training. 
So I'll try to be quiet for about five seconds or so and let <laughs> you get through this thing. And then we'll go on to the next slide. All right, excellent. Yes, we've got most of the audience has voted. Go ahead and get your last responses in now if you wanna take this poll and then we will show you what the outcome is. Yeah. Right. There you are. It looks like there's a few people who, who uh, don't know their conversion rate. So hopefully this will be helpful to them. Yeah, so you can take this formula. We're going to send you over the, uh, as I said, the PowerPoint presentation. And um, you can kind of figure out what your conversion rate. I know, I know what our conversion rate. I can tell you that like for every lead that comes in that turns into a qualified customer, we close about 40% of those. And again, that depends on the channel that it's coming in from. So I know like when I analyze our numbers every month that we're either on pace or off pace. So good time to get started with this formula. So, and we also know, for example, for us, since we serve, you know, solar roofing, home service industry, and we have all this data at our fingertip, we know that the average conversion rate for referrals is about 60%, which is really, really on the high end. I think most of our customers are seeing about 50%, meaning like um, when they're going after the referral market and it makes sense, like referrals are warmer leads because you are getting a referral, you're probably more in market, maybe you're ready to buy something right away, you're just making your final decision, you're going to a credible source and you're saying, hey, Michaela, uh, can you suggest a good roofer for me? Or, hey, who did your solar panels, right? And then you can say, well, XYZ company did my solar panels. And here's their information. So it's already well on the way of, you know, being a warmer lead for your sales team than it would be somebody, you know, cold that you, you didn't know that wasn't referred to you, right? And this takes us to the next point. You have to review your lead sources. Like, I, again, we talk to thousands of home service businesses every year. They just about all do the same stuff. And in order for you to really analyze if something is working well, get your conversion rate down and then boil it down by the lead source. So therefore it's like, is my Google ads getting me a 20% conversion rate and I'm spending 10 grand, you know, that might give me the ROI that I need, but my door knocking is getting me 25% and I'm spending five grand. Well, that seems like it's a little bit better and this is how you wanna to start to view your business. And then the final thing that we also notice is um, you improving your sales and or follow-up processes go, go a long way. Like it, it takes so much time and effort to get a brand new customer and to go out there and bid the job and to align everything and to execute on it. And it's like, that doesn't have to be the end of your relationship. That relationship can continue and you can lean on that customers to get additional customers. So. I'm surprised we're not getting to the end of the uh, presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. I know, I love it. All right, so then the next thing you really wanna track is your cost per acquisition, right? So cost per acquisition is super important and something that we religiously track, like almost like on a daily basis, if not on a weekly basis. So therefore, you know, not all customers that you've gained are created equal. Some of them you may be spending a lot more money gaining, than others. So it's important for you to get your formula down um, and figure out like where your cost per acquisition is. And again, the total cost to get a new customer divided by the number of customers. So if I spent $10,000 on a Google ad campaign and I got one new customer, you know, that was a $10,000 cost per acquisition. Uh, and that's also a very important metric uh, to track of. Uh, and there's also a, you know, we know by talking to customers and that's all we do, you know, day in and day out, we kind of have a baseline what a CPA is uh, for your industry. So, but before we move any further, let's get another survey up there and figure out where you guys are on your cost per acquisition. And if you don't know, perfectly fine. You know, you can start tracking it by using these, you know, simple techniques. And the goal for today's call is really to give you like three or four simple yet effective things that you can do right away in order to start tracking and start to like you know maximize your dollar spent and with that being said again cpa i just would want to say one thing is like that should be tracked by channel and if you're doing three or four things you should know what your cpa is by channel and Absolutely. that's when you can really figure that out i'm gonna just pop in here for just a second Vic. i realize our poll uh 
question is a little long, so I just want to mention that the industry average range based upon feedback from a few of our customers is that the cost per acquisition is about $1,500 to $2,000 for the industries that we serve. So those of you that are still filling out the poll, let us know if you are at or below that range of $1,500 to $2,000, or if you are above that, or if you don't know, that's okay too. Let us know that as well. I'll give you another second to fill that poll out. Looks like we've got most of our responses. So we will go ahead and get that closed. And share the results. Cool. Yeah, so it looks like the majority of you guys uh, don't know or you're at or below the industry standard. And again, just so you know how we derive uh, that number is we, uh, when we do like our discovery, phase and we're talking to solar companies roofing company home services we actually ask them flat out hey what kind of advertising are you doing and you know what is your target cost for acquisition and that's how we came up with that data um it was straight from those conversations so so you, the goal is number one is if you don't know you know where you're going to have this formula and it's no better time to start than today to get rolling and again i'm this is probably going to sound like a redundant thing that i'm saying but you want to review your lead sources and you're going to realize quickly that not all these sources are created equal and you want to focus and optimize on the best ones right and one of the practices that we do here that some people enjoy don't enjoy or may hate is we do this stop start and evaluate process right we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail later uh, we just and the way we do this is we uh, we we make a deal and we dedicate, we're gonna do this for 30 days and then we're gonna analyze what the outcome is of these things. And then we're gonna, we started it, we stopped it, we analyzed it, we compare against what we thought we were gonna get. We compare against other things that we're doing and then we either continue to do it or we discontinue to do it. Um, and some things may take a little bit longer, but for the most part, you know, realizing what you're doing that's going to yield the results some things might take 30 days some things might take 60 days or 90 days the bottom line is don't be afraid to change yeah because it boils down to this i think everybody when we wake up in the morning whether you know you're doing what you're doing or we're doing what we're doing is for every dollar spent and it's a hard earned dollar for all of us it is for for you and it is for us we need to make sure that we're getting the best ROI. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about ROI too, because I know that there's like an industry standard thing that you wanna shoot for. And then there's ROI that seems a little bit too good to be true. And again, some of this is really relied on the sources and the ROI gets boiled down by the net income that you made. So therefore, you know, what, what that job um, brought in versus what the investment was that I made. Right. So if that job um, bought in 10 grand and I only spent two thousand dollars to get that job, I made a five X ROI, which is pretty awesome. So now we're going to do another survey. And again, I'm going to use that five X. It's kind of like a benchmark of like where you should be aiming for, regardless of what you're doing. Like, why do something if you're not shooting for that five X ROI? I don't know. But we're going to ask you, uh, do you know what your ROI is? Give you a little bit of time to fill out this poll. It's a little easier, simple yes or no. All right, give you another second to complete that, and I think we are done. Oh, got a couple more coming in. Let me make sure everybody gets a chance. All right, I think we are good to go. So let's see what the results of this are. Well, most people already don't know the ROI, so we're hoping that this will help as well. These three equations, by the way, these formulas uh, that Vic is sharing, they are um, going to be shared with you at the end of the webinar by a PDF download of these slides again, so you don't need to necessarily hold on to uh, your notebooks or tech leads. <laughs> yeah, and for the, and for the people that know your ROI, this is great and then the next question for you is not to be answered here but is it granular right do you know what your roi is by source right 
So, and as I said before, you know, a good ROI is considered to be at least a 5X, right? And if not, you got to do what we talked about before, which is like, you got to start, stop, evaluate, and adjust. And um, it's, there's nothing wrong with stopping something. And we're going to talk about that as well, right? So if you're going down the path of like, uh, making that commitment now that you know the formula you know what the ROI is and you're like hey you know what now I'm shooting for that 5x I'm not getting that 5x um, but other things are giving you a, a 6x or a 7x maybe you should do more of those things I mean it sounds like common sense but not all of us stop and really like analyze data to that level and then we really really know like this is a, a dollar spent that's going to give me the most return on investment for my company uh, so this guy right here, this uh, billionaire dude that started out from a garage in his house. You guys know him as the ex, uh, I don't know if he's still, he's definitely a, the founder and former CEO of Amazon. He's got these guiding principles that I read a few years ago. And one of his guiding principles for leadership is basically people who tend to be right a lot. And he only hires people that uh, are right a lot, which makes a lot of sense, but uh, what he also noticed is like people that are right a lot also change their minds a lot. And it may be uncomfortable for employees, it may be uncomfortable for you to change your mind a lot. But the, one of the messages that I want to share with you today, and I thought I know it, I know for a fact it drives McKay like crazy, is I change my mind a lot because I will go towards something that I feel like is a good plan, and then I'll analyze the data and take a look at the analytics whether it's my cost per acquisition or my ROI or my conversions. And I'll be like, you know what, this is just not working. I think I can take that money and I can do something else with it. And then, you know, by doing the trial and error phase of it, then we come up with something that really works. That we're happy with as a company, but I want to leave you with this. It's completely fine to change your mind a lot. Uh, and people that usually do are analyzing the data. That was his point. So get into analyzing the data. I know for some of you, this is new and please use these formulas because then, you know, you're going to be able to get to hopefully where this guy was, you know, I wish everyone on this call to be a billionaire, but if not, the minimum that's going to happen is you're going to run your business in a much more efficient way. Yeah. So let's talk about the economic climate, right? Uh, now more than ever is a good time to really dig in there and, and really figure out what your analytics are, right? Uh, and then for, for some of you that responded, hey, I know my metrics, this is great. And guess what you can do now? Since you know your metrics, you can compare it to what my metrics were six months ago. You know, we call that a cohort and what your metrics are today. So let's say that we're entering into a recession. Some people feel we're in a recession um, and the economy is unpredictable. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. But if you do know your metrics, you can compare your metrics prior, like six months ago or seven months ago, what was happening. That's you know what a lot of savvy business owners do compared to today. And if you're not yet at the point to know your metrics, this is a good time to start better than ever because with the economy being as unpredictable as some people think is going to be or actually already is, this is the time that you need to make better decision and the best decisions for your business. Now, I can tell you, like, I started working in 1997. I'm going to age myself. And I started at UPS as an industrial engineer. So I was the guy, and now I can figure out why I'm into numbers so much. I was the guy that we used to, like, go into a hub where all the boxes came in. And I would figure out a better, more efficient way to get these boxes They were coming in from all sorts of places and then send them out all across the country. And they have... This network of belts of UPS inside that looks like a crazy California freeway, right? Uh, and one of the things that I, that I learned there is to like really take a deep down approach and look at the data. Um, and the um, uh, the other thing that I learned is like I've been through a couple of cycles of the economy really turning bad and being bad. And there's two different approaches that you can have here, based on my experience doing this for a very long time. One of them is you can roll up in a ball and you can go hiding and you can say, I'm not going to spend any money. I don't know what tomorrow has in store for me. And, you know, I'm going to have a negative outlook on this whole thing. And you're, you know, whether you think you're right 
or whether you think you're wrong, you're, you're going to be right with whatever decisions you make, right? And the other outlook that I've seen, and I've seen business really succeed in this, is I am going to continue to do the things that I've been doing. Some of them I've even increased their marketing spend during the downturn, because what happens coming out of the, coming out of the downturn is a lot of those businesses that rolled up in a little ball and went into hiding. They're not going to be competitors anymore. And when you come out of the economy, you actually gain market share. It may not feel like it when the economy is down. It may, it may feel like, hey, I am spending more money than I ever did just to maintain what I'm doing. And you're right. But as soon as the economy turns around, there's this thing called pent up demand. And feel free to look that up. It happens at every like coming out of a bad economy or downturn in the economy. When that pent up demand happens, that's when you're going to earn all the rewards from investing or borderline even over investing and making sure that your business remains stable during a downturn in the economy. So I wanted to share that with you because I know that we are talking to a lot of people. The economy is in the air. The feeling of the economy is in the air. And two messages here is really like number one. Don't get caught into that doom and gloom scenario. Invest in your business, continue to invest in your business, but do it even better with the analytics and you'll have some of the tools at your disposal to do so. Wow. Thank you so much for all of that. That was amazing. Um, we have a little bit of time. Uh, we are a tiny bit over time, but we I do want to have a little bit of time for questions. So if that's okay with you, Vic. Um, we will take a couple of questions. Let me see if we have any in the box. Give me one second here. I'm gonna pop my screen off for just a second. So I can. By the way, while you're doing that, stick around till the end because if you do wanna try our software, we're gonna make you an offer that you can't refuse, kind of like the Godfather. So that, that's coming up at the very end of this. Yeah, so one of the questions is, what is an ideal percentage of business? What is an ideal percentage of business coming from referrals? Um, some people that we talk to are really, really good at the referral game. And they've grown their business from like 10% referral to over 60%. So 60% of their business is actually coming from referral. Because if you think about it, like everyone that you've ever done a job for, uh is an advocate for you they can send you um they can send you referrals like now we track that as well and we know that like for every advocate that you have they'll produce 1.2 referrals and we also know not to throw data at you and we also know this one those 1 1.2 referrals that you get are warmer leads and we track like all the number of referrals per customers that they get and over our 700 plus customers that we have in our database we throw all those numbers in there and we, we see that like they close 60% of the referrals that they get. And we know like what kind of ROI they're getting as well, because we know what your you know typical job is um, uh, cost. And, and then we know for a fact that we can deliver that kind of ROI for you. And if I told you the ROI numbers that we delivered, you probably would think that they, you know, they're too good to be true, but we have data that backs it. And, um, believe it or not like when i tell you we shoot for like five percent we actually are getting an average of a 34 x roi for people that are using our software to get more referrals so whether you use our software or you don't use our software whether you're doing it on a spreadsheet go get it and there's no reason why your business can't you know be shooting for that 50 percent mark excellent thank you Meg. we do have one more question and i do want to uh, pose this one to you before we get into uh, who our on-time drawing winner is and that special offer that we have been talking about. Uh, I do wanna be mindful of everybody's time, so hanging with us for just another couple minutes. I promise you won't take up too much, but it will be worth it. So um, one more question for you, Vic, and then if anyone else has other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at marketing at gettthereferral.com. We are happy to answer any questions that you have. You have your uh, registration invite. You can also just reply to that and it should come to you. So last question before we get into the details of that offer we've been talking about. What is the ideal referral reward for a roofing company? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, you know, there's so many clever customers that we talk to. 
And I can tell you, think about what you want to happen. I know ultimately you want to get the job, you know, and that's, that's the deal, right? But do you want more appointments coming your way? Or, you know, do you want to just pay for the referral? Because I've heard some roofing companies, we actually have a case study on this. They reward a couple of different ways. They reward for every uh, appointment set, right? Therefore, a referral that comes in that we actually get a sit gets a reward. And that could be $100 right? Then once that is closed, you can do it in stages. One, and, and some of this may be too hard to track. So you may just want to stick with one thing, right? You can either reward the $100. It's going to cost me a hundred bucks just to get an appointment, if not much, much more than that anyway. So I'm fine with that. And then at the end of it, if we get that job, I'll also give you like anywhere between 250 and $500 additionally. And think about it, the reward that you're going to, you're going to give. Now for solar companies, it's a little bit higher. Solar companies were seeing about $1,000. Some of them are about $1,500. For roofing companies, it's more in the lower range of like, you know, $250, maybe $500 at the most with some of the reward being given at the front end when I actually get a sit. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all of that and all of your expertise today. It has been amazing listening to you speak and present on data and analytics because I know that is your expertise and I'm always in awe of how much knowledge you can share with everyone. Um, so without further ado, we have our on time drawing winner. That is Kimberly Orvin. Congratulations, Kimberly. You are going to get a uh, swag box shipped to you with some fun things that you can represent GTR with. So look forward to receiving um, that will be contacting you to get your shipping address very soon. And I do want to let everyone know about what is next. Vic, I will turn it back over to you. Oh, one second. Not yet. Hold on. I have one more thing to give you. We have so much today. I'm nearly forgetting. We took a deep, deep dive today into data and analytics, but that is only one piece of our reduce our our newly released white paper that's coming out today. You guys are getting exclusive content today, the very first ones to receive it. It will be in the handout section uh, of your GoToWebinar, so take a peek there. In addition, you'll have uh, PDF copies of the slides for today, so you don't have to uh, try to transcribe your notes or anything like that. So please take advantage of the white paper. It is. Uh, it does have data and analytics in it. That is one of the points, but it is the best practices for your referral program. And there are actually six points that you can dive into and learn everything that you need to know. And it's all, it's all completely backed by data and research. And we put a lot of work into that. So take a look and we hope that you find value from that. Now, that offer, here you go. Take a look at GTR's backend dashboard. I'm going to let Vic give a little bit of information about this, but essentially we've shared all of these great KPIs and data uh, analytic formulas that you can use. And if you found that to be a little daunting, uh, so do I. So <laughs> GTR can help with that. This is actually a, a picture of our backend dashboard. We actually track a lot of those metrics for you automatically. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll turn it over to Vic and let him dig into no, this is great. And before we actually do that, definitely download that white paper. I looked at it the other day and it's amazing. She, that white paper is like top notch things you can do like tomorrow. She has a lot of best practices on how to make your referral game uh, stronger, some stats in there. Uh, you can incentivize people. Um, it's worth this weight in gold. So good job on that white paper. And one of the stats that really popped out at me on that white paper, 84% of your customer base wants to give you referrals our salespeople only ask for 10% of the time. <laughs> it's like you got 74% like money on the table there and they're willing to do it. It's just that, how do you do it? How do you make it easy for them to do it? How do you track it? You know, all that good stuff. But that's exactly what this uh, dashboard will cover. Well, part of what we do as well, just to give a quick plug is uh, we build uh, your own custom branded app that your customer uses. You can engage with your customers and communicate with them. And it really drives uh, like the more, you have those interactions with them, the more that you build value with them and the more they, they're going to turn over and say, hey, I'm, you, this is a great experience for me and I want to give you a referral. But as Michaela said, some of this sounds too daunting for some people. And 
a lot of the stuff that we talked about is actually right there at your fingertips on our dashboard where we track all of that. We actually track like all the sales reps too and how many referrals are they getting and you know how many are they closing because we have integrations with the CRM. So we can take some of this off of your shoulders. If you want to find out more, you know, definitely uh, let us know. And then we're going to make you the software that you can't refuse. If you do want to find out more, because you're obviously here, because it's this is something that an ROI is important to you. So there's no better way than doing it with like an exclusive offer. So if you're here today and you made it till the end, thank you so much for making it till the end. And we're going to give you an offer that you can't get anywhere else. And we went as about as 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 far as we could go without making our accounting team go crazy. So you attended this <laughs> webinar, you want to find out more about get their referral, you get 25% off, which is awesome. And the only thing we're going to ask is like attend this, uh, do a demo with a rep within seven days and webinar attendees only, this is only for you. If you decide to go with us, you'll get a 25% off the subscription. One of the metrics that we do track, which I think is super important, whatever the cost of our software is and our service, once you're up and running, we actually get you to the break even point in month three. So therefore, everything that you make past month three is all ROI for you. So. Um, all right. That, oh, can I just say that I've never seen that uh, offer this low? <laughs> so um, people get a, get a webinar, uh, get, get a demo booked today. Um, we are finally at the slide that I have been teasing this entire time. My apologies again, and thank you for indulging me uh, with your patience. Thank you so much for joining us today. We went a little over, and I wanna deeply thank you again for uh, spending all this time with us and even going over with us, because I hope that we offered some value. I hope that um, you got some information from Vic that will carry you into uh, the future to help fuel your business growth. Um, make sure you download the white paper as well as the slides from today's presentation if you enjoyed them so that you can carry this knowledge over into your business. And of course, last but not least, the link is in the chat box to book your demo. You can do that today. It's no obligation, but that is the way to walk in that 25% discount offer. So please be sure to uh, go ahead and, and book that demo today so that we can make sure you get it um, done within the next seven days so you can lock in that discount thank you again any additional questions please feel free to reach out to us we appreciate your time and you guys have been amazing have a wonderful rest of your day and vic thank you for all of your expertise and your time again today as well we will see everyone 